Okay then my friends, so to enable a good offline experience, we know now that we want to cache certain resources that our app is gonna use. But what resources do we actually need to cache? Well, at the very least, we should be caching the core resources that make up the user interface of our web app. Static assets, like if we had a logo, we could cache that because that's gonna be the same on every page, right? Any core HTML, like the index page, or any core CSS, like our style sheet or materialize, or any images that we use in the site quite a lot. So this is known as the app shell, and it will probably be very similar on every page of our app, right? They're assets that don't really change that much over time. So at the very least, we should be caching these resources that make up this core app shell, the core design of our application and that way if we do lose connection at any point we should still be able to open up the app and see some kind of actual app and content rather than the default Google Chrome error because our service worker is still going to be able to get those assets from the cache that it pre-cached and this is known as the shell model approach to building PWAs where the shell of the application is the core layout and styling all right so we're going to start by caching all of these kind of core assets that make up the shell of our application. Now, where do we do this and at what point do we do it? Well, a good place to do it is inside the install event handler, because this happens every time a service worker file changes and then we reload the page. So we're not caching assets all the time, only when our service worker file changes, which might typically happen when you update the app and need to recache assets. Remember, the assets that we're caching are ones that shouldn't change much over time, so they're not going to need constantly recaching anyway, okay? So this is where we're going to do it, inside the install events handler. So first of all, what I'm going to do is comment out these console logs because I don't want those to get in the way anymore. And the next thing I'm going to do is say caches because we're going to access the cache API here. That's how we do it. Dot, and then we're going to use the open method to open a cache. Now, I'm going to pass a string in here, which is going to be the name of the cache. In fact, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to store a string in a constant at the top, which is going to be the cache name. So I'll say const, and then we'll call it static cache name and set it equal to site hyphen static. Now, you can call this what you want. I'm calling it site static because these are going to be the static resources, the shell resources, if you like. So this will be the name of our cache. And I've stored it in a variable because we might use it more than once in this file. So I didn't want to keep writing it over and over. And if we change it, I have to update it many times. So anyway, now we're going to pass this variable name here into this open method. So what this is going to do is open this cache if it exists. If it doesn't exist in the browser, then it's going to create that cache called site static, and then it's going to open it. Now, this thing here, this is an asynchronous task, meaning it might take some time to do, maybe not long, but either way, it takes time to do, and it returns to us a promise. Therefore, what we can do is tack on a dot then method, and inside we fire a function when this promise is resolved. Now, this function takes in the cache as a parameter. So that is the cache that we open. We take it in this callback function once this open method is complete. So inside this callback function, we now have access to the cache and we can do something with it like add items to it. So now what do we want to add to it and how are we going to do that? Well, to add items to the cache, we can use one of two methods. We can either say cache, which is what we receive back right here and then use the dot add method to add a single item, or we can use dot add all to add an array of items. Now, both of these methods, add and add all, both reach out to the server and get those resources. So if we use add and specify a resource inside that method, it's gonna reach out to the server and get that one single resource. If we use add all, we pass in an array of resources, and that is gonna reach out to the server to grab all of those resources inside that array. Now we're going to use add all because we want to add an array of assets. There's multiple different assets that are going to make up the shell of our application. So that is the method that we'll be using. So what I'm going to do instead of adding the array of different assets right here and going down the page a lot, I'm going to 
write all of the array assets up at the top and store those in a variable, much for the same reason I stored this in a variable, just in case we use them again later on, and they're easy to access at the top. So I'm gonna create another constant, and I'll call this assets, and set it equal to an array. Now inside this array, we need to pass in a load of different strings, and each string is gonna be a reference to a certain asset or resource that we want to cache. So the first one is gonna be just forward slash. Now I said they're gonna be references to resources, but actually what they are, are requests. Because if we request just forward slash in the browser, then we get the index page, right? So if we delete this and just go to just forward slash, then that is a request to just forward slash and we get the index page back. So what we're doing here is actually inside the assets, we're storing the request URLs, right? Does that make sense? Because what's gonna happen is, it's gonna take all of these request URLs and make that request and then bring back the asset from that request. So this is one particular request a user might make to open up the index file. So we want to store that because when we're storing assets in the cache, what we're doing is storing as a key to each asset, the request URL, which is gonna be this thing, and as the actual value for that asset, we're gonna store the response. Does that make sense that we get from the server? So that if in the future, a user, oops, makes this request, then it's gonna look in the cache for that request, that will be the key, and then it's gonna look at the value to that key, and the value will be the response that we got earlier, that we pre-cache, and then we can send that back to the browser. I really hope that makes sense. So we need to do forward slash because that is a possible request that could be made in the future. So another possible request that could be made again for the index page is forward slash index.html. So both of those we need to store because a user could make either of those requests. And in each case, we want to return the resource. So that's the first thing we want to store inside this assets array. The second thing we wanna do is the app.js file, which is over here, and also the ui.js file. So let's do forward slash js forward slash app.js and then another one underneath. So let's do this time forward slash js to go into the folder, then forward slash ui.js. Now there are a few other things that we want to cache as well, but what I'm gonna do is just paste these in so you don't have to uh, watch me write them all out. So what I'm doing is caching this materialize.min file right here because we're gonna use that for our design. That's part of the shell, I suppose. Then also our own styles.css, which is in the CSS folder right here. We're gonna pre-cache that. We're gonna pre-cache the materialized CSS file right here. We're gonna pre-cache the dish image, which is inside the image folder right here because that shows on the home page. And we're also going to pre-cache this CDN to the Google font library. Remember, we are storing here, or rather pre-caching the request URLs. And this is the request URL for the material icon library, which we have inside the index right here. So when our index page loads, it's gonna try and request this. So that request is gonna run through our service worker and it's gonna see that we have this request, hopefully in the future, stored in our cache site static right here. So when it sees that, it's gonna grab the response that we also store in the cache next to this as a value and then return that back to the user so we can use it offline, okay? So it doesn't matter whether we're using our own assets like this or CDN assets like this. The process is the same, okay? So now we have all of our assets right there stored in an array and we can pass them into this thing right here, assets. So what that is gonna do is reach out to our server and it's gonna grab all of the responses from these requests and also the response from these requests and it's gonna add them to the cache. Now what I'm also gonna do is just log to the console, console.log caching shell assets so that we know that this is being done at this moment in time. Let's just add the semicolons. Okay, so this is all happening inside the install event, remember. So when a new service worker is being installed, to the browser. And that only happens when we change the file. Now, there's one problem with this code right here. When the install event is fired, it might only take a split second for the service worker to be installed. So this install event right here 
might only last a very small amount of time. Now after that, the browser might stop the service worker completely if it's doing nothing else. And we don't want it to do that until we finish this cache operation right here, which is actually asynchronous and might take longer to do than this thing right here. And that would mean that we can't be certain that the caching is complete before the browser declares the service worker fully installed and potentially stops the service worker. Now to combat this, we need to use a method on the event called wait until. So what I'm gonna do right here is say EVT because that is the event object that we get as a parameter in this callback function when this event fires. We use the method called wait until right here. Now we pass this asynchronous task right here, caches.open into this wait until right here. And what this wait until method does is wait until this promise right here is resolved. So it doesn't finish the install event until this promise is resolved, okay? So we can be certain now that all the assets will be cached before this finishes. So I'm just gonna neaten this up a little bit by putting this onto the next line and scooting this in like so. So that is everything done now. So just to run through it again, we're saying event wait until we pass in caches to open to open a cache if it exists it opens it if it doesn't exist it creates it then opens it and once this task is done it fires this callback function where we add all of these different assets so let's try this out in a browser i'm going to save it right here and go to the browser and what i'm going to do is just have a look now inside our cache storage see now we have one called site static because we didn't have to reload or anything because it says update on reload and the browser automatically reloads when I make a change over here in my code. So it activated the new service worker and installed the new service worker. And during that installation, we did all of this right here. And if we go to the console, we should be able to see if I refresh that we're caching the shell assets. You saw that right there. And what happened is if we go to the cache over here, it created this site static cache and it stored all of these different things inside the cache. And we have the path over here that it stores and also the response that we get from the server right here and the content inside that. So now in the future, if we need any of this stuff, we don't have to make a round trip to the server and back to get it. Now we can just reach out to the cache and get it from there. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in the very next video.